The following is an introductory navigation review of the Opus Refrigeration Library software, or Opus ORL. When accessing ORL, depending on your user settings, you may or may not have a navigation tree to the left. The nav tree is a hierarchical system navigation tool used for accessing core programming files and configurations. It is not necessary to access the nav tree for everyday operation. I will close the sidebar now as it will not be utilized by most Opus ORL users. The Opus ORL software has the advantage of being highly customizable. Therefore, your layout may differ from the one being shown here. However, the core elements of the layout will be similar regardless of how your site is programmed. At the top of the system overview, we have multiple tabs, with each covering a different element of your system. The first tab, shown here, is for Rack Overview and Schematic, a graphical overview of the core components of a refrigeration rack suction group. If a rack or system has multiple suction groups, each will have its own rack schematic tab. The graphical schematic offers a detailed snapshot of current rack performance in an easily accessible sequential format. The next tab, Circuits, provides an overview of all refrigerated circuits and their individual cases' performance. Depending on design, this overview may include all circuits on a system, or they may be broken into multiple circuit tabs based on suction groups or case types for simplicity. Next, we have the Universal Loads tab. This tab covers any custom control sequences, allowing for fast and easy programming of custom logic, such as compressor proofs or rack shutdown sequences. Besides that, we have the miscellaneous I.O. tab, which shows an overview of inputs and outputs in detail and may include additional custom points for monitoring. The next tab, Rack Track, is a quick historical log of core rack readings, such as suction and discharge pressure, current staging, and rack superheat. Note that the readings shown here are of a simulated station, and a live rack would show much more variation in its readings. We then have the Systems Info tab. Here you can examine site details, read or add site notes, or quickly navigate site reports, such as alarms or module com loss reports. Next, we have the subcooler settings. This includes an overview of all subcooler elements, their performance and configuration options, along with I.O. and P.I.D. setups. And finally, we have the condenser VFD settings. Depending on the design of the condenser, whether standalone or controlled, there may be very different options shown here, but they will include a complete overview of whichever system you have. Taking a look at the top of the screen, we have a quick link to modules in ComLoss. Because this is a simulated station, all modules are in ComLoss and showing 100%. On a site with all modules communicating, this would be a green bar reading 0%. At the bottom of the screen, we have additional navigation buttons. The Defrost Schedules button will give you a snapshot of all circuit defrost times and occurrences. Double-clicking on a circuit's row will bring up that circuit's defrost scheduling tool. RC Config, or Refrigeration Control Configuration, includes all configurations for rack components as well as additional configurations for condenser, I.O. points, subcooling, and other miscellaneous equipment. The next button is for Energy, offering a snapshot and history of energy usage throughout the building. This would come into play more on an HVAC and lighting program, but it may be utilized on smaller sites controlling all energy sources from a single controller. Next, we have History, a powerful tool for reviewing and comparing performance as you can select and combine multiple sources into a single, easy-to-read graph or table. Besides History, we have a shortcut button to Alarms which shows all active alarms, alerts, alarm history, and summary from a single menu. The last button, Network, allows for the end user to quickly assess if there are any communication ports disabled or experiencing communication failures. This concludes the introductory Opus ORL navigation video. For more in-depth software information, please refer to our other Opus ORL software training videos.